When it comes to crash protection, the world of motorcycle clothing changed in 2018. Before then, it was legal to make clothing for us motorcyclists without putting it through any tests to show it would offer us any protection in a crash. It wasn't legal to put armour in that kit unless the armour itself had passed the test to prove it would protect against impact. So in almost every case, bike clothing was untested kit, it was fitted with tested armour. And it was down to us as riders to trust the manufacturer's standards that it would hold together if we fell off. Now that came to an end in 2018. Now anything that's sold as bike clothing has to be tested to show it offers at least minimum protection levels. And I don't just mean the armour, all of it has to be tested now. There are a range of tests for things like abrasion resistance, seam strength and resistance to tear. I could go into all sorts of detail, but I'll save you from that particular bore and point you instead to the links in the description for this video. They'll take you to detailed explanations of those CE tests and how they're done. This video is all about the kit that meets the highest levels within those various standards without costing you a fortune. So let's get on with it. Okay, everything I've been talking about so far on this video, none of that applies to helmets. They've been legally required to meet safety standards for yonks and anyone who makes helmets and doesn't get them certified has been on very, very thin ice for all that time. There's a reason this Nolan N66 is in this video and that's down to its safety approval under the new ECE 2206 category. It's a stiffer, more comprehensive set of tests than the ones in the ECE 2205 standard and I think you can have more confidence in a helmet that passes it. The first few lids to be certified to the new standard were all top-end helmets that cost at least 400 quid and Nolan changed all that when they released their first two lids to the new standard. The N88 started at just 200 pounds and this N66 is just 150 quid in plain schemes as we record this video. As with all Nolan lids, it has a plastic shell and it's got a comfy interior that's fully removable. It fastens with an easy life strap buckle and it comes with a pinlock anti-mist insert on the visor as standard. It's a simple sporty lid, but you still get a luxury like a sun visor, though there aren't recesses for intercom speakers and you don't get a posh carrying bag. But all of the basics are covered and this helmet gives great value for money. The main standout though is that certification to the new 2206 standard. Again, I won't go into too much detail about the new tests, we'd be here all day. Well, I'd be here all day, but you'd probably drift off pretty quickly. But where the old test subjected lids to impacts from just one height, the new one has a wider range of different impact speeds. The helmet that best protects you in a high speed impact might not be as good if you have a lower speed knock. So the new standard does high, low and medium speed impacts to make sure a lid meets the minimum standard in all three of those. The new standard also tests a helmet as effective when it hits the floor at an angle rather than just in a direct hit. That's a definite bonus over the old test as glancing blows like that are actually quite common. There are also more potential impact locations on each helmet when they're doing the tests. So a greater range of the lid surface is subject to testing, which makes sure you get good quality coverage overall. So is a 2206 helmet safer than one that passes the older 2205 standard? I can't say it is because who can say how a helmet certified to the older standard would perform if it was tested to the new standard? I'll bet that a load of helmets that are the better ones that pass 2205 would also pass 2206. But the only way you absolutely know you're getting a helmet that's up to the new performance level is to buy one with the certificate to prove it. And this Nolan is currently the cheapest way you can get one with that certificate. Back to clothing and those new CE standards I was talking about earlier. Fair play to RST, they adopted the new rules right from the beginning in 2018 and this leather jacket meets the highest level within the latest CE clothing tests. This one has the CE AAA label inside so you know it offers a decent level of protection. In my opinion and also in my experience, leather is still the best material when it comes to crash protection. Personally, I'd rather not fall off a motorbike ever again, but if I had to then I'd rather be wearing leather at the time. This jacket has a sporty cut, stretch panels and elasticated inserts that let you move around comfortably on the bike. There are two external pockets, you get two on the inside as well, and there's also a connection zip to join it up to RST trousers. On the inside you get shoulder and elbow armour, but that only meets the basic level 1 of the CE standard for impact protection. There's no standard back protector either, but there is a pocket for an optional insert. Now if it's maximum protection you want, and I guess that's the whole point of this, then you can upgrade the shoulder and elbow armour for 34 quid and then spend another 30 quid on a level 2 back protector. If you put that 64 quid on top of the £230 for this jacket, and at current prices it'll still cost less than £300 for a AAA CE jacket with top level armour throughout. The jacket's based on the top half of RST's S1 race suit, so if you want leather top and bottom, there are also matching jeans that are based on the bottom half of the race suit. They're AAA as well, and they cost £200 a pair. 
but this video is about top level CE passes for the least money. And when it comes to jeans, there is a cheaper way to AAA. This video is all about the highest safety test passes for the least cash. And that's exactly what you get with these Vice Gator jeans. They're lined denim jeans that have a CE AAA rating and cost £159.99 as we record this video. The lining is made from aramid fiber. That's the generic term for the type of material that also covers Kevlar. So the lining in these jeans isn't Kevlar, but it's made to perform a similar function, i.e. protect against abrasions on the road. The lining goes all the way from waist to the bottom hem on the front of the leg, and it lines just the seat area on the back. Then there's a mesh lining between the two layers, which has pockets in it that you get soft, squishy armor in that actually meets the higher level two grade within the CE impact protection tests. When we're talking about protection, that mesh layer makes quite a big difference actually. From the early days of testing leather race suits, manufacturers discovered that an extra layer there helped avoid abrasions to the skin caused by friction inside the suit when the outside of the suit's rubbing against the track or the road. It's the same story with denim and having that extra layer can really help if you're unlucky enough to find yourself skating along the road on your backside. All sorts of claims get thrown around about protective denim riding jeans. You'll hear people saying that you don't need a high CE rating to get high levels of protection. They might be right. The thing about CE testing is that it doesn't test kit to a single point of failure and then award a rating based on how long it took for it to fail. There are separate tests, so you can submit for either the A test, the AA test, or the AAA test. The threshold for single A is obviously lower than AA, and again, AA is lower than AAA. A manufacturer decides which one to submit it for. So who's to know how something that's only passed with a single A would have done if it had been tested to the specification for double or AAA? It might have passed, it might have exceeded it by a massive margin, or it might have been submitted for either of those tests and fallen short. We don't know. But we do know these 160 pound jeans were submitted for the AAA test and they did well enough to pass it. And you've got to give Weiss credit for that, haven't you? Let's just say you decide that you want to start making motorcycle gloves. If you do, you've got three CE test pass levels you can aim for with those new gloves that you've made. Start with the basic level one, then you can add a KP mark if your gloves have knuckle armor and that passes the impact protection test. The third and highest level is level two, which has to come with the KP mark after it, because if you don't have passworthy armor, then you can't have a level two pass at all. This pair from LS2 meet that last category, level two, and at 80 quid, they're nowhere near the most expensive gloves on the market either. They're leather throughout, they've got plenty of plastic reinforcements, there's beefed up bits in the key areas and then accordion stretch panels for extra flexibility. You even get a rubber visor wipe on the left thumb in case you get caught out in the rain, even though the gloves aren't waterproof. So most gloves on the market at the moment meet the lower level 1KP. Are any of those other gloves more protective than these LS2s? Maybe they are. I think the tests for gloves are fairly basic actually and might not reflect some of the protective features on some of those more expensive race gloves. Equally, if the tests are basic, then when you expect those more feature laden gloves to actually pass them really easily, these gloves have a certificate to prove they pass and that's why they're in this video. The CE ratings for boots are the trickiest of all of them to understand. There are four compulsory tests and then a series of optional ones which cover things like waterproofing and protection against impacts. These Zenith boots by Risha cost 80 quid. They've got 290 reviews on Sports Bike Shop at an average score of 4.63 out of five. And they meet the higher level two in all four compulsory tests. First test is for height and they're tall enough to meet level two in that. And they then resist abrasion, cuts and crushing forces for long enough to get level two in all of those as well. As I've said with the other stuff in this video, I'm not promising these boots offer the highest level of protection that's available. I'd be crazy to say that when there are boots on the market with comprehensive ankle braces, impact protection inserts and meaty soles. Those boots will offer you better protection and many of those also have level two of the CE test throughout. But if you're after tested performance for not a lot of money, and after all, I guess that's why you're watching this video, then you don't need to look much further than these Risha Zenith boots. Loads of people have had their say about safety testing and whether it reflects how well your bike kit's gonna protect you. Crash protection is only part of the story and we all hope it's a function that it's never gonna to have to perform. But if we could really say for certain that it's never gonna be called into that kind of action, then why would we wear dedicated bike kit at all? Even when it comes to crash protection, those testing labels don't and they can't give the entire picture. 
which I've really tried to put across in this video when I've been going through all of the bits that we've covered. There may well be kit with a lower level CE pass that's more protective than the stuff I've run through in this video. I'm really not promising this stuff gives the maximum protection of all the kit that's available. There might or might not be brilliantly protective kit that's only been tested to single A, so it can only be labeled a single A. There also might or might not be a whacking great monster swimming around in Loch Ness. We don't know. What we do actually know is how all of the kit in this video performs because it's all been tested and it all does well in the top level tests that are currently available. And you can buy the whole lot based on prices as we record this for £800 and that includes the armour upgrades to make the RST jacket level 2 throughout. If you want more info on any of the kit we featured in this video then there are links in the description below to the product listings for all of it. If we reviewed anything in more detail then we've also added in a link to that specific review video. If you've got any feedback then please pop a comment below but otherwise thanks for watching.